What's going on guys, JBB2 here, hope you guys are enjoying your Tuesday and for today's gameplay we have a Prank Kids versus a Flu Andres with me as the Prankster going first. Now once again for this video I am playing my 45 cards decklist that I have crafted and no this decklist is not up anywhere, not on my Twitch account, not anywhere okay I was just experimenting with this decklist and let me tell you this decklist is pretty good because I played this deck list on stream yesterday and off stream combined I have a total of I believe 25-30 games and my win rate was close to 75-80% with this deck list I climbed yesterday on stream from diamond 5 to diamond 3 close to diamond 2 so pretty good deck list I will be doing a deck list video for this uh, deck list I'm using currently in a couple of days so be on the lookout for that with that being said let's get on with today's replay now you guys already know how the prank kids adventure combo works so I'm gonna do the full prank kids adventure combo as is and if you guys want to know the details about it there are a lot of videos out there you guys can look into even I have a YouTube video uploaded for this so you guys can check it out as well so we're gonna do our full combo uh, we're gonna put the Griffin Omni on the field and since I already started both my pranks and panda in my hand I was forced to search for pranks and pitch pranks as well we're gonna activate pranks get our copy of Roxy's because that way we will now have a copy of Roxy's in our hand to banish now this step right here I'm doing of the doodle deuce tribute is not that important okay you guys can skip it but the reason it's important is because I wanted to get all three cards I require for the butler combo in my hand I already have pranks and pandas like I told you guys before so with this I'm gonna be adding a copy of prank is name I require to go into my butler combo in my hand plus place the place will be serving as a discard for our token with that I'm gonna go into my bow wow and then activate Roxy's banish out the Roxy's draw into an imperm special out fancies set down my cards and my turn activate pranks so you guys see right now in my graveyard I have the fancies and lancies I do not have dropsies I added dropsies back into my hand okay so I'm telling you guys anytime you can please try to add all three copies you require for the butler combo in your hand if you can okay because think about this anytime your opponent can kaiju okay when the turn flips over the priority is on your opponent side your pandemonium can only be activated during main phase and um, again the priority being on your opponent's side meaning they could kaiju your fancies they could lava golem two cards from your side one being fancies or in this scenario if you go to the adventure route they could sphere mode you because you will have three monsters so they could literally take out all three monsters and you will not be able to go into your butler combo if you do not have all three cards in your hand again there are a lot of ways your opponent can out your cards so I urge you if you can get all three cards for a butler combo in your hand so with that I'm gonna activate prank its pranks also prank its pranks guys understand it's not something you just use casually you need to strategically target cards for the prank its pranks recycle let's say you know you will have to flip over skilldren on your opponent's turn if you know what they're playing and you have Miyamu in the graveyard with a butler combo set up on the field recycle out the Miyamu. if you let's say went through two doodle doos you need to recycle one doodle doo in this specific scenario I recycle my prank kids place because on my opponent's turn I know I'm gonna go into my butler I'm gonna need to pitch one card with my fans activation so I need to have my prank kids place back added so I could pitch the place on my opponent's turn as well Roxy's because I if I had to I could go through all four kids names rotation as well I have one Roxy's banished out so I want to recycle the other Roxy's right so you need to think about your recycles as well with that the turn changes over I activate Bow Wow opponent has nothing I add the two cards I require for the butler combo back into my hand with that the opponent starts off his turn by activating a pot of extravagance now pot of extravagance again can be a lot of things Eldlid, Sky Striker uh, even flu so they could be anything Pot of Duality comes in after Pot of Extravagance. That's a lot of draw power, okay? He flips over two Ds plus one of the Advent. At this point, I realize I am up against a Fluon Reese player. So, I did not bother to negate any of the pots, okay? You need to save your Griffin Omni for something much, much worse than pots themselves. Most situations, 
evenly match. Because Flu players, Eldritch players, Sword Soul players, any main deck can run evenly match. And sometimes you need to let their card searches go through to be able to use your Griffin Omni to negate out evenly matches. They could be mind gaming you, so keep that in mind when you are playing the game as well. The opponent adds Advent. Now, keep in mind, you need to understand this, okay? Whatever card your opponent adds to their hand and shows you that card, you need to keep track of those cards. Now, since I know the opponent has Advent, I cannot just flip over my Imperm on the first bird normal summon and or Imperm out the Eaglin and hope it goes through because Advent will be able to dodge that card. So, we need to play around it. Terraforming adds the map into his hand and of course with the map he has a small bird name in his hand as well. Now over here on the map do not negate out the map with your griffin when it's put on the field okay. If you are in a situation like this when your opponent puts it in the field don't griffin negate it. When your opponent activates the map and shows you a bird in his hand that is when you use your Griffin Omni, okay? Because if the opponent has two maps in his hand and you just negate out the first one, they could still put the second one on the field and still activate it. So you want to negate their activation because the activation part is a once per turn. Then he puts the Unexplorer on the field. This is the card you never ever want to see on the field when you are up against a flu player. They will start tributing their cards like crazy. So once he puts his card on the field, and it starts to chain immediately, okay? Griffin negate plus pop it. Do not want to deal with that. So I use my Griffin negate, pop that card, that card's gone. So he activates map, he shows me Eaglen, he's gonna pitch out Rabina, put the Eaglen on the field. Now over here, if you are a pranks player and you are worth your salt, I'll tell you one thing, on your opponent's first uh, bird summon and activation, you need to chain your pandemonium to it okay you cannot chain your pandemonium to the second bird's activation because once it resolves they will be able to put a Ryza or apex avian or the empen on the field and you will your butler will either have to use two pops or it will get bounced from the field or something like that so you need to use pandemonium on their first normal summon and that is exactly what i'm going to do I'm not going to use my Imperm, as I told you guys, keep in mind, he had the Advent in his hand that he added with the Pot of Duality. So we have our Pandemonium result, we go off into our Butler. This Butler will be on standby, no need to pop it right now. Rabina resolves, gets added back to his hand, and then the Eaglen resolves, and he's going to normal out the Rabina from his hand. He searches for a Ryza with the Eaglen as well. So Rabina comes to the field, it starts a chain now, to which we respond with our own activations. We get Fanzies, we get Lampsies, and we get Dropsies. And now, we will use our Butler's first pop. So you guys see? You guys understand what happened? If you waited till the Rabina to chain your Pandemonium to it, on Resolution, yes, your Butler will come up on the field, but Rabina's Resolution is still there, and they will be able to put Ryza, if they have Ryza or Apex, if they have Apex on the field, to either bounce your Butler or have your Butler negated with the Apex. So you need to chain your pandemonium on the first activation of the bird itself if you want to get the resolution to pop your opponent's field before they go into any big name monsters. With this, we're going to activate Butler, banish out the Meowmu, and that's going to pop my opponent's field once. So he does Advent play, which is really good for us, actually. Advent goes away, he pitches out the Rabina from the field, and he searches for a stride. That's okay with us. Now that means our Imperm is online. So once he puts now the stry on the field we could use the imperm to get out the stry so with that we're gonna put two copies of drops on the field as you guys know for our totally awesome play rabina resolves he gets token i'm okay with that he puts stry he's gonna try to activate stry to banish out the unexplored so he was gonna banish out the unexplored and use token to add the unexplored back to his hand again do not want that happening and since the advent is already out we're just gonna imperm out the stry that means no banish out on the unexplored, no add back to the token. He does get the chain block with the eagle and don't care much for it, the eagle jumps back to his hand. With that, he has still has his normal summon by the way. Okay, this all happened on the map special. Normals out the token, targets the Rabina, that's okay with us. I use my butler, pop the opponent's field again, so he has no materials on the field to go into a big name monster. The Rabina gets added back, don't care much for it. Normals out Eaglen from his hand. 
the token activates, gets added back to his hand. He leaves just the stride in the graveyard. He sets down a card, passes his turn over. Now the first order of business over here is obviously our totally awesome to negate out the opponent's effect. So the first thing we do is go into our totally awesome. Totally awesome comes to the field. Then I'm going to activate my Draco bag, bounce out the map. So because I don't want the normal summon affecting me in any way. With that, I'm going to activate the adventure as well to get myself a second Omni Negate. I'm going to pitch out the Lampsies from my hand. The Griffin comes to the field as well in face of attack. Then I commit my normal summon. Then I go into my doodly doo. We are going to activate both our graveyard activations, banish out the enchantress in the hopes of drawing something good, but it doesn't matter, we have lethal on the field anyways. We have two omnis plus lethal. So Frank is placed chain block, banish out the enchantress. I draw into Ash Blossom, fanzies. I have no more monsters left, okay? We go into Nightmare. I'm going to even activate Nightmare and bounce his face down card in his back row because I did not want to take any risk at this point. I had lethal, I knew it, but did not want to take risk. With that, we just jump into battle phase, start whacking our opponent's card. The opponent did not have anything left, so with that, it's GG's. That's it for today's game, guys. I hope you enjoy these kind of videos. Please consider hitting the like button if you do enjoy them. And if you guys are interested in the live version of all this, I do live stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash jpvduel. Link along with my schedule and a link to my Discord will be in the video description stuff for you guys to check out. This is JPVDuel signing out for today. I'll be seeing you all in the next video. Peace!